And now for some hydrostatic force. So there is this water trough and the ends are eight foot by eight foot, which is huge. Why did I make this trough so big? Well, it's okay. So we've got this eight foot, eight foot by eight foot rectangle that is on the end. Find the force on one end of the trough. And by the way, the trough would go back like this and be filled with water, but we don't actually need that part. We just need the face of it because that's all I was asking, one end of the trough. So next, what I do is say, well, what if there was a rectangle in here? Then how much force would be on that rectangle? So there's the little rectangle. And then use the idea that there's 62.4 pounds of force for every cubic foot when you're talking about fresh water. So if we find the area of the rectangle and multiply by area, which would be square feet, then we would be left with pounds per foot. So the first thing to do is find out what's the area of this rectangle. So since the rectangle is going to be going up and down, I'm going to use y as the variable. So this, its height would be delta y. And then if I'm calling this the y direction, then this down here would be a length of y. But we need to know not how far off the bottom it is. We need to know how far underwater it is. So if you go from the top of the water down, since the total is 8, and the bottom is y, then this part, or the length, um, how far underwater it is, would be 8 minus y, so that would be the depth. And then when we multiply by the depth, the units are now going to be pounds, so we just need to add all of those up. And the adding comes in the form of integrate the 62.4 and then that gets multiplied with the area. And area would be, well, the rectangle has a height of delta y, and it's 8 feet long. So it's going to be 8 times delta y, and then the delta y becomes dy when we're integrating. And then also we need this last length or uh, depth, which is 8 minus y. And then integrate from 0 to 8. So the 62.4 times 8, you could factor that out. And then it would just say integrate an 8 minus y. And the limits are 0 to 8. So then there is the 62.4 times 8, and then the antiderivative of an 8 would be 8y, and the antiderivative for y would be y squared over 2, and then evaluate from 0 to 8. So there's still the 62.4 times 8, and then there's going to be, substitute the 8 in there, so there would be 8 times 8, which is 64. And then substitute the 8 for y squared, so that's going to be 64 divided by 2. And when you substitute the 0, it contributes nothing to the problem. So inside the brackets we have 64 minus 32, so that's going to be 32. So all I need to know is what is the 62.4? times an 8 times a 32. So 62.4 times an 8 times a 32. So 15,974.4. 15,000 and now I forgot, I think it was 794.4. 974.4. 
So I got these switched. Nine, hold on, let me get the pen. 974.4, and that's in total pounds.